Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we're making low poly rocks in Maya. Let's jump in. Okay, let's learn how we can make a low poly rock in Maya. Go up to your poly modeling shelf and we're gonna choose a shape that we'll use as our block out. I'm gonna choose the platonic solid. It's this one here, click on this. And the platonic solid, I'm just pressing F to frame in on it. The platonic solid is a primitive with some subdivision options as well as an inflation mode. So open up your attribute editor, go to poly platonic one, and we have some settings here. Um, feel free to play with these, see what kind of shapes you can get. But for me, I'm just gonna change the primitive type to tetrahedron. I'm gonna leave subdivisions at one. I don't wanna um, increase this way because if I do, for this shape, it doesn't give it um, subdivisions very evenly, right? So I'm gonna leave that at one. Everything else I'll leave the way it is. And already it looks a little bit like a low poly rock. I'm just gonna scale it a bit. And I'm gonna just push this vertex back in. So I'm holding down the right mouse button, go into vertex mode, and I'm just gonna push that back in. All right, here's my new shape. I'm gonna go into object mode, select it, and I'm gonna open up the modeling toolkit. And here I'm gonna click this add divisions button a couple times. All right, so now we have some more subdivisions and I'm gonna go into vertex mode now. And what I wanna do is grab some of these vertices and just move this mesh a bit, but I don't wanna just do it like this. I'm just gonna undo that by pressing Control Z. And what I'm going to do is press B on the keyboard. It enters soft selection. Now if I hold down B plus the left mouse button and drag, it'll increase or decrease the fall off. So if I move it now, these vertices, you can see that it moves that surrounding geometry a bit as well. So that's nice. I'm gonna move um, these ones as well. Let's see here. There we go. And then what I'm going to do is just give this a bit of a twist as well. Um, pressing E to go into rotate and a little bit of a, a twist. There we go. All right, so here's my new shape. I'm gonna press B to exit soft selection. Not gonna spend too much time on each of these steps within this tutorial. Um, the video will get too long, but you, by the end of this, you'll have a process that you'll make, um, you can use to make your own rocks. All right, so I'm gonna press Q, go into object mode, holding down the right mouse button, go into object mode, and then what I wanna do is give it some more uh, subdivisions. I can do it through here. I didn't really move these uh, the geometry too much, right? But if you move it quite a bit and your quads get kinda long, this will just replicate it, this button here. So instead what I'll do is I'll select the mesh. Right now I have a bit of history, so I'm gonna delete the history, freeze these transformations, and I'm going to go up here to mesh, retopologize. I'm gonna open up the option box, and I'm gonna, for now, just reset this. For target face count, I'm just gonna make this 5,000. 5,000 is plenty to make this a low poly object and, and create some form, um, and then for the face uniformity, I'm just gonna drag this all the way up to one. I'm gonna click retopologize, and Maya will give this some more subdivisions that are a little more even. All right. Now we can do a bit of sculpting on this. So this is the sculpting phase. Uh, select the mesh, and what I wanna do is just delete the history again, and open up this uh, sculpting shelf, and I'm gonna click the first brush. So if you have your mesh selected, it'll, you'll be ready to sculpt, otherwise I'll ask you to select the mesh. And then to increase or decrease the brush size, hold down B plus the left mouse button and drag, right? And you can increase or decrease it. And if, to, if you want to change the strength, hold down M plus the left mouse button and drag, and you can increase or decrease the strength. And I'm just gonna sculpt up, the, um, sorry, build up this form a little bit with the uh, lift brush, but feel free to come here, play with some of these brushes. And what I also wanna do is smooth out some of these edges, right? So I'm gonna hold down shift, and it's just a fast way to get to the smooth brush, right? Hold down shift, and I'm gonna soften some of these forms. We're not really making an organic rock, but if I leave those forms too pointy, sometimes what happens is it can end up looking like a low poly crystal. Right, so I'm just gonna soften some of this up. But yeah, this is a great method for making um, organic rocks as well. Yeah. Here we go, and now let's just build up the form. I'm gonna just de decrease my brush size, and just basically drag and pull. Strength's a little bit high, let me just bring that down. 
right? And if you want to do the inverse, just hold down control and it'll push in that mesh instead of uh, lifting it, right? And let's just say we sculpt this for a bit, we're happy and this is done, and we're ready to make it look low poly. Okay, so I'm gonna press Q on the keyboard, select the mesh, and I'm going to first go to the poly modeling shelf, make sure I have no history, and I'm gonna go to mesh. I'm going to retopologize it again. And the reason for that is I want this um, edge flow to better match this form. For the target face count, I'll just leave it at 5,000, but if you really sculpted um, high detail, you want, you'll want a higher number there, right? And then for face uniformity, I'm gonna drag the slider back down to zero. I'm gonna click retopologize, and after a few seconds, Maya will retopologize this with an edge flow that keeps this form a bit better. Okay, now um, let's triangulate this. So select the mesh, I'm gonna delete the history, and then under the mesh tab, I'm gonna click triangulate. And then, um, can't really see anything, I'm gonna turn off the grid, but what I'm going to do is select this mesh and harden these edges. So under mesh display, click harden edge. Right. Still, we won't see much, right? There's a lot of topology there, but if we select this mesh now, I'm just gonna delete the history again, and go to mesh and reduce, just gonna make sure this is a reset, and click reduce. Now it's gonna start um, reducing some of the geometry. By default, it'll take away 50%, but what I'm gonna do is drag this all the way to 100, and then start scaling it back. It's just a fast way to get the look I want. I'm also gonna hold down control and drag, right? So that I don't um, drag too far too fast. And I'm just gonna bring it to something where it has a nice low poly look that I like, right? And I think this looks pretty good. What I'll do is I'll turn on wireframe unshaded to have a peek as well, take a look at the topology. And I have a material made from earlier as well, so I'm just gonna select the mesh, assign an, excuse me, assign an existing material, lost my voice for a second. And I'm gonna choose Lambert 2. And you can see this has a really nice low poly uh, look to it. Nice shape, good um, divisions. And yeah, it's a lot of fun. It doesn't take too much time and you can make a lot of different forms. I'm just gonna throw in a plane pressing T on the keyboard to bring up this window. And the nice thing about low poly rocks is if you keep it, um, sorry, I'm just gonna bring this up on the surface a little bit. If you keep it slightly generic, right, with not too distinctive markings, it has a lot of reusability. So I'm just gonna duplicate this, maybe rotate it, scale it down, and I'm just gonna sink it in a little bit. Just duplicate again, scale it up. By the way, I'm just doing a fast duplicate by holding down, um, when you're in the move tool, holding down control and just gra grabbing one of those arrows. But yeah, just rotating it and... Right. So you can have like a collection of rocks that looks fairly different, right? And um, looks really good. So hopefully you can um, use this uh, process for your own projects. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed this process for making some low poly rocks and you'll be able to use it for your own games. Until next time, this has been Digital Dreambox, your destination for game art.